the FDA has essentially decided to reject the new depression medication from the pharmaceutical company Alchemies, known as ALKS5461. It was a combination of buprenorphine and Samidorphan. This is a big blow for Alchemies since this medication was originally expected to be the most profitable product Alchemies would have, assuming it got approved. However, this decision was expected. For one thing, back in November of 2018, an independent panel of experts for the FDA voted 20 to 2 to reject this medication. Now, that panel's opinion was not binding to the FDA, but it's often the case that the FDA makes the same decision as their independent panel of experts. In addition, and perhaps even more telling, the FDA briefing document that they submitted to the panel of experts before they made their decision was very critical of alchemies and their shenanigans that they used in attempting to get this medication approved. For one thing, this medication only had one successful phase three clinical trial. It actually had two other unsuccessful phase three clinical trials in the past, the FDA has required that medications have at least two successful phase three clinical trials in order to be approved. In addition, they used a method of attempting to artificially reduce the response to the placebo known as sequential parallel comparison design. That's a lot of big words, but what it means is they basically have two stages. In the first stage, they have a group that is put on the placebo and a group that is put on the actual medication. But then what they do is they look at the people who responded well to the placebo and take those people out of the study. And in the second stage, they just have people who did not respond well to the placebo. And that is basically an attempt to artificially reduce the placebo response to make it seem like the drug is more effective than it actually is. And the FDA was quite skeptical of this method. In addition, they disagreed with the fact that Alchemies used the Montgomery Ashberg Depression Rating Scale, which is a 10 item rating scale, but they decided to take four of these items out saying that they didn't really have anything to do with depression, including suicidal thinking. Alchemies was trying to claim that suicidal thinking is not really related to depression and therefore it should not count, but the FDA didn't agree with this. Another problem this medication had was Alchemies, instead of looking at the depression scores that people had before they started the medication and that the depression scores that people had after the trial was over, they attempted to use an average of people's depression scores over time and compared that to how much people improved in the placebo group. What's interesting is according to the FDA briefing document, Alchemies actually was told about all of these concerns that the FDA had with their trials. But instead of listening to the FDA, they just went ahead and did what they wanted to do anyway and were hoping that the FDA would accept their data. But it looks like the FDA didn't accept it. Now, there is a small silver lining in this for alchemies, I suppose, and that is the FDA requested additional clinical data to provide substantial evidence of the effectiveness of ALKS5461. Alchemies also says that they plan on meeting with the FDA to discuss the next possible steps and whether or not ALKS5461 has a viable future. But it sounds to me like if Alchemies is going to get this approved, the FDA is probably going to require them to redo many of the clinical trials, at least the phase three clinical trials. They're probably going to require that the clinical trials not have the shenanigans that the previous clinical trials had. And these clinical trials will have to actually show that ALKS5461 actually is effective. So that means the best possible case scenario would be that this medication might be approved two or three years down the road. But we don't really know if that's going to happen. I think that one of the biggest problems this medication has is it is a combination of buprenorphine 
and Samidorfan. Buprenorphine is an opioid that is primarily used as a substitute treatment for people who are addicted to other opioids. Samidorfan is an anti-opioid. Now, there actually is some evidence that buprenorphine alone might have certain antidepressant properties, but the fact that Alchemy's is combining buprenorphine with an anti-opioid probably ends up canceling out the antidepressant properties of buprenorphine. Now, some people think that this medication might be facing hurdles because it is an opioid, but in reality, I don't think that's its biggest problem. Because for one thing, buprenorphine is not considered the most addictive opioid. That's why it's used in substitution therapy. Also, when you combine buprenorphine with samidorphan, which is an opioid mu receptor antagonist, you end up getting something that is maybe very mildly addictive to one in eight people who have already had problems with opioid addiction. But for the most part, this medication is not really that addictive. The main problem that this medication has is the simple fact that it's not very effective. Now, this whole situation with ALKS5461 has interested me because I am a little bit disturbed by the way Alchemies has used techniques like sequential parallel comparison design to try to artificially reduce the placebo effect and I am pretty happy that the FDA does not seem to be accepting it. There is at least one other medication that they are trying to approve for the treatment of depression that uses the same tactic, and that is Nuplazid. Nuplazid is an antipsychotic, although it works very differently than other antipsychotics because it is not a dopamine receptor blocker. And Nuplazid currently is approved for the treatment of psychosis in Parkinson's disease but they are trying to get it approved as a treatment for depression. It would work as an adjunct to antidepressant medications, and they are using the same tactics that Alchemies was using to try to get Nuplazid approved by trying to artificially reduce the placebo response. Now, I have gone into detail about ALKS5461 in two other videos, and I will leave a link to those two videos in the description. So if you want more detailed information about how ALKS5461 is supposed to work and the shenanigans that Alchemies has used to try to get it approved, check out those two videos. So for more videos, including mental health videos that aren't always what the pharmaceutical companies want you to hear, go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and join the Zork Army. You can also catch me on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, and Twitch at Zorkvid123.